This is a money tree. You need to charge more for your custom music. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, this is Steven Malin, music composer, educator, and arranger, helping you to elevate your story. By far beyond any other question I get as an educator is the idea of what do we do to increase our rates selling custom music? Now this could be for film, TV, video games, whatever. Now the reason I think everyone asks this question it's not because people don't value their own music and they don't value their own time, but I think it comes from a lot of backlash from clients. It comes from game developers, it comes from film directors. And what happens is perhaps in your past, you had this confidence to ask a high rate that you're actually worth and you got shot down. And so now you don't have that confidence that you once had to ask for what you're worth. So today I, I wanna encourage you because I've been through that same journey of not really feeling like I'm getting paid what my time is worth. I wanna walk you through how you can very quickly and very easily start asking for what your music is worth. So studies show that most composers could increase their rates by 30% today and there would be no backlash from any of their clients. This is a pretty incredible concept if you think about it. Let's say, for example, you're, you're a brand new composer, you've only been writing a little bit. Um, let's say you have a film gig, you have a video game gig. Let's say that you normally charge $500 per minute. Well, if you were to just bump it up to 650 per minute, 30% increase, your clients wouldn't even know the difference. Now we have to kind of step back for a minute and talk about the whole value proposition of what your music is actually worth to better understand why we can ask this. So the average industry standard rate for composers for media is between $500 and $1,500 per minute of music. So if you're just starting off, understandably, you should be charging less because you don't have the experience and necessarily the time frame to get work done as fast as those who've been doing it for decades. That's understandable. But if you have been doing this for a while and you find that you're just not feeling good about what you're charging yet, bump it up. Try increasing it by 30% today for your very next project. And you'd be surprised how little lashback you get from clients. Now I've done this personally many times and my personal mantra is unless there is a distinct reason why I shouldn't increase my rates, I won't. But in most situations, I actually increase my rates by a little bit every single project. So just to be completely transparent right now, I'm more closer to the $1,000 range per minute of music. Just today, I was approached by a game developer working on a game trailer for the game, and they needed two minutes of music, and so I quoted $2,000. Now, the old me, a few years ago, would have been absolutely petrified to ask for that much because I didn't have the confidence to ask for that because I didn't want to get a no, I didn't want to be rejected. But what I've learned doing this for a while now is always quote the amount that you know that your project is worth. So the way that I process my quotes is I usually just base it off of time. So in the example I gave before, this game trailer was gonna take me about eight to 10 hours because they also wanted sound effects with it. So if I didn't put the sound effects in, then I would strip it back to maybe five to seven hours because the average industry standard time per music is about three hours per one minute of music. And I have found that to be true for myself. So if someone needs 30 seconds of music, it's gonna take me about an hour and a half to start and finish the entire project. Now, something that I think is also very valuable is to always include revisions inside your package. Because one of the biggest concepts here 
and misconceptions for developers and for film directors is they, they have this fear that they're gonna spend a bunch of money hiring a composer and it's not gonna be right. And then they just wasted all this money and now they have to pay for more revisions even though they didn't, they weren't 100% sure from the beginning. So it's kind of like a, a guarantee, if you will, that really helps ease the minds of these creators. And so when you can say, hey, this is my package deal. It's gonna be X thousands of dollars for this project. It's gonna include revisions and you can come up with a contract. And so I actually have a contract that I've come up with over the last few years. I have a separate video on that. If you wanna check that out, I can link that in the description. But basically the idea is you want to keep all the rights to your music basically all the time, unless this is a huge buyout. That is not the norm. That's if you're working for AAA game studios. That's if you're working on a huge Hollywood budget film. Um, but in most other cases, you want to retain the rights to your music so that you can sell this as your own soundtrack later and you can just use it however you want. But I always put in my contracts, this is gonna be in association exclusively with your game because that's what they're buying, right? They're buying the exclusivity of your music. Now, the other way to do this is you could actually sell your music non-exclusively. So what this means is you could write exclusively, technically, you're writing this custom to the game project or to the film project. And once you write it, you actually get an agreement as part of your contract to say, hey, you can use this music in your film or game, but I'm also going to sell it. I'm also going to put it on a marketplace. I'm going to allow other people to purchase this. And what this does is it gives them a second option that is significantly cheaper because that is a budget option. So in that case, because it's not technically custom music, it still gets the custom music out there, but it allows you to reuse it, right? So what I do in this case is I charge maybe Let's say for instead of $500 a minute, I might pull it back to $100 a minute or $200 per minute. And you can figure out where your range is within that and just kind of do the math. But the idea here is, let's say you're already doing that. Increase it by 30%. That is really how much you can go before you get that backlash from your clients. Because ultimately, you want to continue great relationships with your clients. I'm not telling you to go in and mar those relationships, but I do believe that you should value your own time, especially if the clients aren't. And what I have found to be true is the more I increase my rates, the more respect I get from these developers and these directors. They actually value my music more. And the more I try to fight for the rights of my music, they actually tend to side with me and say, hey, absolutely we're creatives too we don't want people buying out our rights we want you to have ownership of your music and we're going to support you in it so in those cases i've actually had those teams actually on social media and youtube etc they've actually gone out of their way to promote my music and when i have soundtrack sales so it's been a really cool relationship building process over the years and what i have found to be true as well is the more you fight for the value of your music, the more these people are going to value your music and then they're gonna tell their friends about it. They're gonna promote your music and when their friends need music, they're gonna connect you together. And what happens is you start to build these long lasting relationships, which is how you actually build a brand. It's how you actually build a business that lasts beyond one project. And so to date, I have several companies that I am their go-to composer. They might change that and they're welcome to, but I think it's a really significant concept that you should establish these relationships and you should continue to increase your rates even with the same clients. So even to date, every single time I have a new project with even the same customers, I will increase my rates and they get it. Now in that situation, I might not go up by 30% because you know you don't wanna uh, hurt those relationships, but maybe 10%, 15%, every project, you should just get into a rotation because what's gonna happen is as you grow your studio, as you grow your business, you're gonna learn that you have to start pulling in more gear. You have to start replacing machines. You have to get new software. You have to stay current and not to mention all the taxes and how those increase as your income and business increase. And so your costs increase as a business. So it's important that you continue at least annually, but I, I suggest project by project, you should continue increasing your rates until you feel comfortable with it. You need to feel super confident because I tell you what, when you do free projects, 
you feel really worthless when you're done with your project because you did all this work, but there's nothing to show for it. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times that you should do things pro bono. And what I mean by that is you should always be exchanging your services for something. Now, there've been times, for example, where I've scored entire films while investing in those relationships that actually turned into paid work down the road. And I knew that kind of going into it, I wasn't going into it blind thinking, well, I hope this turns into something. Um, you gotta really be smart about that. And there's just also been opportunities where I've done stuff for free because it's fun and it's very fulfilling for me musically and personally. So use your own judgment about whether or not you wanna do something for free. But generally I'd say steer clear from that just so that you can always be building your brand and you always feel good about the work you do. And there's always something attached to it. There's always, there's always a kind of a return on your investment because that's what you're doing when you're building your brand. We're not carpenters who build products or whatever. We don't have physical things to give people. It's all digital. It's all abstract. So no one else is going to fight for your rate except for you. No one else, unless you have an agent, but most composers don't. I certainly don't have an agent and I've made it just fine because I'm a freelancer. I love the negotiation process. And so the final thought here, whenever you are the person being approached in a negotiation, you are always on top. But when you go out of your way to contact somebody else about the project, you're always the lesser party of the two. So building your brand is super important and being present, especially in social media and on your website, on YouTube, etc. It's really important that these negotiations start by the client coming to you because then you can state your rate. Here is my normal rate based upon your project specifications. And then nine times out of 10, they say, okay, great, let's get started. Now that 10% of the time, yeah, you have to negotiate a little bit. You have to work within their budget. You might have to decrease a little bit, but if you're taking this rule of thumb that you're going to increase by 10, 15% every single time you do a new project, then that actually doesn't hurt you at all. That actually maintains a bottom line because you pull it back to your actual normal rate and then you're always making more and you're always increasing your business. Now, the purpose of writing music is never to get filthy rich. Instead, we want to elevate stories. We want to do what we're passionate about, helping creatives bring their story to life through music. So it's important that we take the time to build our brand properly from the ground up, not trying to take shortcuts and to ultimately value our music at the level monetarily, financially, that we want to be considered. No one else is gonna fight for you, so it's your job to do it as your own brand continues to grow. If you find this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and join every single week on Wednesdays as we do music business videos like this to help you elevate your story. Also, if you're interested in my free Udemy course titled Business 101, the modern film, TV, and video game music composer, there's a ton of tips in there about these very topics networking, how to get more gigs, etc, etc, etc. It has multiple hours worth of material in there. It's very good. And I'm really proud of that. It only takes a minute to get logged in and to get access to that link in the description below. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. This is Wolfgang. Say hello, Wolfgang. Hello. I like to imagine him with a British accent. <clears throat> it looks like Lucy wants to play too. Hey. Cute kitty. Cat videos are still cool, right? <laughs>